Hi Virgo, welcome to your tarot reading for the week of October 9th through the 16th. It's Raina here and I'm using my Rider Waite deck. Just um, a little blast from the past and keeping it a bit more simple than my typical spread just to change things up. I'm kind of getting in that mood for getting out of my typical pattern. <clears throat> okay. Treat these, the timing with uh, a lot of, give it a lot of um, room. Don't just, um, because you know, it's, it's a week. So, <laughs> usually our weeks are not that, um, what do you call it? Um, eventful. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oops, I keep putting it like so. I think this is more centered, isn't it? I can never tell until I look on YouTube and then it's like, ah, why did I do that? Okay. And I really don't need to put them right up against each other. I don't know why I keep doing that. So I'm reading these as pairs since these are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, going along with each other. So I'm just going to read them as pairs. We have the two of wands and the eight of swords. So in the past position, this indicates a desire to possibly move even, relocate, but a fear about it, feeling like you can't. And it's it, it amazes me. Um, I, I mean, I think a lot of us have that, where we want to do something and then we come up with excuses why we can't do it. Or maybe there are some real legitimate things that would have to be worked out. It could be, uh, with the Two of Wands, it can be that there is some kind of job offer, some situation that requires the person make a decision. That's why, you know, the twos are always kind of like, what would you call it? Um, having to decide. There's a word, I can't think of it. And... Um, so with the the eight of swords what the swords represent are thoughts so you're thinking too much about it which of course virgos can very easily get into and it becomes a negative mind chatter okay of why a litany of reasons why you can't do something and if you can see this that's one of the reasons why I'm using this deck, because it's that classic Pamela Coleman Smith illustration that's so very um, evocative, I think is a good way, and also descriptive. Now you see, I just noticed this, that one of her f feet is in the water and one is on the land. And the same imagery is on the temperance card. So I I would like to, I'm going to have to do that one of these days, is try to find a book that really goes in deep with that imagery of the classic Rider Waite deck to see exactly what they meant. But I'm assuming that they're talking about materialism and spirituality. And so if there is some kind of, oh God, what is that word? Um, where you, I was going to say ambivalence, but that's not the word I'm looking for, where you are torn between two things. One of it might be that you really want um, to explore, to expand, which the, the fire energy of the wands is all about expansion. But let's say that the pay is less than what you're getting right now. That may as an earth sign, you may say, nope, I gotta I have to make at least as much as I made in this job, if not more. Um, I remember, in my case, doing something like that, and I chose, and I said, no, I have to make X amount of money, and that was stupid, 
because it was something that I would have really liked. It was a kind of job that I really would have liked. And, you know, that kind of thinking is very, uh, to me, it's, it's uh, oppressive, because that's a card of oppression, the Eight of Swords. And it's self-imposed. So, yeah, of course, if you can't make, make ends meet, that's one thing. But if you're just like, um, have this false sense of what is acceptable, it really is not a good thing. Because the more you can generate passion in your life, the more good things will be um, coming your way. That's my feeling in that, about the law of attraction, is that it's all about the enthusiasm. When you have an enthusiasm gap, um, that is going to possibly repel, you know, more expansion. So you may take a job and it may pay less, but it kind of stokes those that fire of enthusiasm. And then who knows, you might get like a better offer that comes down the pike. And in the meantime, you're doing something that you enjoy. And yes, of course, there's practical considerations you know not every situation is the same so don't try to saddle me with that one I I know that but anyway that was the past now let's try to look at these two cards and make connections this is kind of a challenge for me too you know because I don't usually do pairs so we have the high priestess um, and the three of pentacles the Three of Pentacles is about teamwork, and the High Priestess is about a deep knowing. Your intu your intuition is is really kicking up a notch. Um, okay, well here's something I didn't even go into personal relationships with the past cards. Somebody may be choosing between two people, and they feel like they can't uh, choose. The Three of Pentacles can be that three parties are involved. And it's also talking about solidity, foundation, in whatever it is that you're constructing. The high priestess with that card is you, your gut instincts telling you what is really up. So in other words, for, for personal relationships, if you are in the position where, um, and, and who knows, maybe you're not the one that is choosing, maybe you're the one being chosen. <laughs> from maybe somebody maybe somebody you're with is saying hmm who should I pick and that is creating uh, that sense of like oppressiveness within you about being in that situation because it's a very degrading position to be in but if you are the one who is choosing it could be that you need to really like right now you're seeing you may even be seeing that Having a solid relationship means that there's cooperation, that uh, the Three of Pentacles is about teamwork. But the Pentacles relates, first of all, you're connected to pen Pentacles because you're Earth. But the idea is that there is, it's a substance, it's solid. It's something that um, has legs, is going to, you something you can build upon. And... Perhaps you have been going on other qualities, so, so to speak, and, and that's putting it in quotes. Maybe they're not really qualities. Maybe you're just attracted to somebody, and you're kind of neglecting somebody else because this other person is so sexy, or they're so, like, you know, desirable in that sense. But you don't really have anything in common with this person, so the chances of a long-term relationship really uh, happening are slim to none, whereas somebody else may not be as, um, you know, overtly charismatic or what have you, but, but they are a solid bet. And your in intuition is like not just going for the surface things, but seeing the, uh, you know, even like the spiritual thing. Do you mesh spiritually with that person? And and the same thing can apply to um, the 
workplace, you know, doing things that give you that sense of passion, a sense of excitement about life, and not just going through the motions. And when you can feel that, there's a sense of that you're in alignment with what you came here to do. And I think the High Priestess has a lot to do with that. I actually bought a High Priestess t-shirt. And, uh, you know, my boyfriend's been wearing it more than I have, which is kind of funny. But um, it's, it's just interesting because um, I love that concept of the High Priestess. The High Priestess is that part of us that is always connected to our higher self and therefore is communing with the non-material, the immaterial realm. Um, this this woman is, she's got a, f a foot in both worlds. On earth, which you know, you're an earth sign, but also the water, the spirit. And she's, but she's kind of, um, she feels a sense of being trapped for whatever reason. And sometimes... I think a lot of times that is on the material side where a person is allowing their practical concerns to be too much front and center in terms of what is happening. And then these are the outcome cards, the Ten of Swords and the Lover's card. <laughs> and I even got the Lover's card, so we're talking about these relationships. Now the Ten of Swords, obviously, um, most people know this is such an infamous card about this sense of betrayal. And this feeling of, you know, being stabbed in the back, you know, not literally, obviously, but, some, you know, feeling that somebody that you put your faith in, that you put your trust in, did not live up to what they claimed that they were going to. And this is the high priestess. And this was what I was saying too, is like with teamwork, co-workers, maybe you um, were working with people who ended up, who are actually betraying you. And that's what the high priestess is. Something is going on and you may not be aware of it. That could be like secrets. But the lover's card indicates that you may either join forces with somebody else as a, um, you know, Maybe you, you're going to be a team. Or that there is this, uh, this is Gemini, by the way. So Gemini, we, uh, this could be a timing card. And, and we have the next Gemini transit is a full moon in December, on December 3rd. So it's possible that this is like saying that this saga will be revealed in its in entirety. This is the... Uh, the hidden part of it, but that it will be out in the open, this betrayal uh, in early December, and you will be able to, in the aftermath of that, maybe you will gain clarity, but also you may be vindicated of something, that you knew something was up and you couldn't put your finger on it. In terms of any kind of romantic situation, you may... I, I, one example is if you are with somebody who has promised you that they're going to leave their partner, let's say that you're engaged in, in an adulterous affair or something along those lines, and that other person said they were going to leave their partner and you promised to, and you, you kept your end of the bargain, then they just bailed. And you feel like you believed in yourself as a couple and they... Um, didn't go along with it. And maybe then you were, you realize, oh, it was all just a sex thing or something along those lines. Oh, they were just using me. Uh, but, you know, it can play out in different ways. It can be, uh, this can actually be a, a card of possible healing. You know, it's a number six, so it deals with Venus. It deals with um, peace. So maybe you have to hit bottom before you can experience what the lover's card represents. Maybe there's something that's kind of hanging in the balance and keeping you in this in-between state, you know, and it's like driving you crazy. 
And again, the timing of that full moon in December, December 3rd, that might be the time when you fully see exactly what's happening because maybe somebody close to you was misrepresenting things. So I guess that's, that's something for the future. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Virgo and good luck to you. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, take care. Bye.